Hi there. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 3 is the basis or the principles around which elementary teachings was built. But I want to go beyond this as an introductory uh, scripture. I'd like to take you through chapter 5 and chapter 6. Uh, not the complete 6, just 6 up to verse 12. And that will kind of position the Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 3 uh, right in where it should be and you'll understand as we go along uh, why the context has got some meaning uh, in reading the scripture as it is in, in, in most cases. So uh, first of all I'm going to ask you kindly that if you have not read Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 5 that you would do so uh, and I want to ask you to maybe take the time out and just pause the video and Go to your Bible. Uh, it's especially important so that you can see it for yourself and really base your convictions on Scripture rather on my opinion. So, uh, um, yeah, thanks for that. And I promise you I won't go away after you pause and you, you, you press play. I'll be back. I promise you. All right. Thanks for reading the Scripture. Really great. Um, so, basically, it starts off in verse uh, 1 of chapter 5 where he talks about that how priests are appointed by God to represent man before him and to do atonement for sins and and the, the use of obviously of uh, sacrifices which we know is pretty much useless but just a symbol um, and then he talks about their weakness as how weak the priests actually are as representatives of men and then next point he talks about Jesus Christ, which has become perfect through suffering. That's the, like the second priest and how he were made perfect through suffering. And, and that meaning he's perfect. He's the right, he's the right priest for us. And then he, he moves on to uh, the local Hebrew church, which actually also should be representing God to the New Testament. But obviously not like Jesus, just as teachers. And how he uh, kind of Paul goes and, and, and says how they are babes. He calls them in Greek babes, babies. And he says, You should have been all teachers by now. You ought to have been teachers by now. And you still have to go over the elementary principles all over again. And then he lists those principles. That's the next thing he does lists all the main principles. And then after he lists the foundation or first principles or elementary, elementary teachings then he goes on and he warns the consequence of falling away after one has received the full knowledge of the truth and this is something that you never hear in church because it's really challenging scriptures and I think because it's so challenging pastors priests stay away from it they don't want to offend anybody uh, but I believe that we should all hear and see all the scriptures even if they're offensive sorry we're serving god here no not no man and i'm not serving no man either i'm serving god so i'm going to say it as it is and i hope in the most gentle way that i can um, and then he goes on and talks about the soil that are not fruitful which which, which, which the rain falls on and how that will be burned um, and this is kind of the second warning and then he and he closes off and he and he lifts them up again in the last uh, bit and he says but I'm convinced of better things uh, from you and he, he talks about their hard work and the promises that they, that that stands for them so God just takes him through this thing of the, the weak priest Jesus the perfect uh, priest um, and sacrifice for sins the Hebrews that are not maturing and should, should be better representatives of God and teaching better. The elementary teachings, he talks about them all over again. And then the warnings of these uh, uh, knowing the truth but not really um, uh, falling away and not living up to them. Uh, and that you cannot be saved once you've fallen back basically. And then about uh, the warning of an unfruitful land being burned. And then he lifts them up again in the last bit. So the elementary teachings is in the middle of this little sandwich, if you want to call it. Um, and, uh, and that's really important to understand what are those elementary teachings. Basically, about 15 years ago, I, uh, after being around a lot of great 
Christian friends and priests and pastors, I decided to journey back to the Bible and find out, but what are the elementary teachings really? What are those principles, that the must-know principles? And uh, I found this as maybe one of the only little framework scriptures. And, and it, the penny dropped for me and I realized how important it is as, as I started studying it out. And I would go back to the priests and some of my friends and they wouldn't know this. In fact, most people haven't gone through, that I've met in churches, most people have not gone through the elementary teachings, are not acquainted to teach others. In other words, they're still babes. That was really confronting for me uh, at the time to realize, hey, I've been in church for maybe 10 or 15 years and I'm still a babe. No way. So I decided, okay, I'm going to study it out. And once I studied it out, I went back to my friends and my my pastor friends uh, and I said to them, hey, here it is. And they, they didn't want to teach it because it was challenging. And um, therefore, that is why this is on, on the internet because I cannot keep quiet about this. If my pastor says to me, don't teach it, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. I'm going to blast it out over the internet. I'm going to tell the whole world about it. So that is what you're looking at today. The elementary teachings. I hope it's inspiring. I hope it helps you to grow past uh, infancy or past being a babe to a mature disciple or Christian. And I think it's, it's bringing the focus back on that we have to take ownership of our own salvation. We need to take ownership of the truth ourselves and not look up to men around us to, to take us to that place of, of maturity. Take it up on yourself because ultimately I'm going to stand in front of God and the same with you. We need to make sure that we all are well rooted in the truth and growing to maturity. So uh, let me just see if I've missed anything here that I wanted to mention to you. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I'm going to move on to this as a practical lesson. So how do we tackle the scriptures going forward from here? So the first thing is uh, read the scripture and then read the context around the scripture. And then once you've read the scripture and the context around the scripture, then go to the next set of questions and then answer those questions uh, either on a piece of paper or in the booklet that you can download load off our site. And then you, then you go back to the next video, which is after this, after you've gone into the questions. And in that video and also uh, in the, the next slide, you will see all the answers listed there. And, um, and then you've got to ask yourself the question, am I able to teach each one of these items thoroughly to another Christian? Do I know the scriptures? And do I know really what to teach there? And what I mean by teaching is using the Bible to teach somebody else, not just talking about it. Um, and that's really where we need to be as, as mature Christians. So I hope this journey will lead you to, to maturity. My name is Stein van Weyck and I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ.